I called him to preach. Um, Lord willing, maybe next year he'll be going off to Bible college and, and starting that process that that most of us Bible people have gone through. Um, I went to college. I spent. I shrunk four years into four and a half years, and I graduated with a Bible degree. And the Lord has blessed that throughout the years. And um, Jeremy, come on up and preach what the Lord has laid on your heart. Starts in Psalms, it's all over the world, but it, it's mainly from David and his son Solomon. And the starting reference would be Psalms 33 8. If you'd like to take your Bibles with me, uh, Psalms 33 8. Why are you finding that? I don't know if it's up here. I'll add it. I'll here. share something with you I found in um, my personal devotions every day. Uh, the other day I was reading this and like most of the time it uh, hurts. Uh, most of the time I, I see something that just kind of sparks my eye and I wonder what is that all about? I don't know if y'all ever have the same thing. Um, so you do. But here's something I found. It, it, it's it actually started in Proverbs, but it brought my eye, and I kept on looking, and I came up with this verse, and I saw it, and I, it's a good verse to start off with, I guess. The Bible says, at um, 33 verse 8, let all the earth fear the Lord, let all the inhabitations of the world stand in awe of Him. I'm going to start this out with prayer. Um, dear Holy Father, I thank you for this day. Thank you for the privilege to preach. I pray that you would let my words be clear that they would know what I got out of this. Not just something that um, they came to church, just hear words and go home and pertain anything. What they understand something they got out of this or something you have them to get out of this. I pray that you call my words. I pray that you would uh, just help us to find something to be able to deny. Just let me pray. Amen. As you can tell, I'm nervous, but uh, hopefully that will change a little bit more as I go on. Um, the Bible talks about fearing the Lord, and uh, it's not really terror all the time towards the Lord. It's not always something, you know, as a little child, you think he'd be afraid of some little monster under his, his bed, or maybe a boogeyman, or whatever it is. But it's not that kind of fear that we should have towards the Lord. It's not terror or anxiety and just... Reverence, and, and I, I thought about this more and more. I said, "What does the fear of the Lord mean? What does it mean to say I fear the Lord?" Well, this is some answers that I got. It says, um, "One of the things I found is is to understand the authority of God in the place of man. Uh, to understand who God is, respect for who we are. He's the Maker. He's the Master. We're the servant. We're the clay. Uh, he's the, He's the Potter." He, he is in control of everything, and yet we're to fear him, but not in the, not in the perspective of terror. There, there is in the Bible that talks about humility, and um, what I like most is it's putting God first above all men, including ourselves. Sometimes the hardest thing to do 
to say, God, I'm going to put you first, not only above all these people in here, but above myself. I mean, think about it. You love yourself. You want to put yourself first. But we're going to put God first above ourselves. And here's some verses I found and some points, I guess, um, about fearing the Lord. One of the things is when you put God um, first and you walk in the fear of the Lord, you'll find wisdom. Wisdom, um, some people say that old age comes wisdom, but I find that searching God's word and walking in his authority, walking in his word, brings a sense of wisdom. And uh, you've heard pastor preach a lot about wisdom, uh, the benefits, and so many things that you can obtain from wisdom. But um, some of the things I found was this. And I have several references if you want to write them down to verses that I, I found to talk about the fear of the Lord. The first one was Proverbs 1 7. It says, The fear of the Lord is the, begin is the beginning of knowledge. But fools despise wisdom and instruction. The first one I found was wisdom, that we have wisdom. And this one talks about how it. If you have the fear of the Lord and you're, you're walking in his authority and his word, keeping him first, that there's wisdom. And at the end of the verse, I always read one of these verses and I read something at the end. One of them is that fools despise wisdom and instruction. Uh, it's true that, you know, uh, fools despise wisdom and instruction. I thought, why? And I think of a lot of um, people who aren't doing what God wants in their life. Not obeying authority in Authorities in their life, not being God first every day. And it was that they, they hated to be told what to do. They all have that in common. Um, you know, they reject the instruction. And um, I found that they hate it, but the reason why they hated to be told what to do is because they didn't, they've never put God first in their life. And they've never said, God, today I'm going to put you first for now on. And every day, if it's a daily thing, you put God first. But um, without, so we, we got to watch for rejecting instruction. Um, another reference I have is 9:10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the holy is understand, understanding. You see, wisdom, it's, um, you see it again, and it's part of knowing that. All that should be put in the things that are, are holy. You know, the best way I can say this is I learned through Sunday school that wisdom is applied knowledge. Finding out something and the best way to do it. I, I learned that from my Sunday school teacher. And um, that's one of the things I love about him is he gives us little, little things that we can learn. Applied knowledge and knowing. And the Bible says that uh, wisdom is knowing that things that you should put first. And it's, it's becoming, um, getting a train of thought together. Uh, when you fear the Lord, you put his word first. When you want to walk in the fear of the Lord, it won't be you first or someone else. And when you do, there's wisdom. Um, here's a third verse, I guess, for it. It says, the fear of the Lord is the instruction of wisdom before honor is humility. That's Proverbs 15, 33. We see again that when we fear the Lord, there is wisdom we receive. Also, we see why fools despise wisdom again. Because they, it, it involves instruction. Being told what to do. Um, instruction of wisdom. We also see that there is humility. And that there is no honor, lest there is humility. Again, it's being humble. But you cannot fear God and be wise in your own eyes. That's something also fools can't, can, uh, can't understand. Is that you cannot walk in the fear of the Lord and, um, and think of yourself as wise. As you know what, what to do and everything you got to understand that sometimes you don't understand things. And that God does, and if you would turn to him and put him first, that you'd understand a few more things than you thought. Um, first one is wisdom. Second one is, is 
It is a motivation for holiness, for righteousness. When we're walking the fear of the Lord, there's a call for holiness. Come walk into the Lord. And I found three verses uh, that speaks about this. The first one is Proverbs 3, 7. It says, Be not wise in thine own eyes, fear the Lord, and apart from evil. Be not wise in thine own eyes, but fear the Lord. Fear the Lord apart from evil. When you decide to put God first, you're going to walk away from evil. Part of becoming more holy and walking in the fear of the Lord is departing from evil, realizing that we're not as wise as we think we are. And not walk in the fear of the Lord and be in sin, continually in our hearts daily. Because we're not putting Him first. We're disobedient. We either will, we either will be in one or the other. And, and these are things I, I kind of just flip on myself what I was thinking when with the Bible, how it spoke to me, and I, the way I perceive these scriptures and the way I pray God would show me. And one of the things I thought was you cannot go through your Christian life and not have God above all and in all of your life. Proverbs 16, verse 6 says, By mercy and truth, the iniquity is purged, and by the fear of the Lord, and depart from evil. Also in Proverbs 8, verse 33, the Bible says the fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride, arrogance, and the evil way. And the forward mouth do I hate. One of the things I learned about walking in the fear of the Lord, the Bible spoke that it, you're going to go away from the things that maybe you used to do. Uh, the forward mouth do I hate. Pride, arrogance, Things that aren't put, allowing you to put God first in your life. A person that fears God, fears the Lord, will not sin because he knows that this place is his Savior. Walking in the fear of the Lord will make you a little different. Because it's not all about you. And, and people see that in your life. They know whether you are doing something because you want a name for yourself. Or you're doing it because you understand that God is holy. He wants us to obey his authority. And we say, okay, please is God to do it. I do it. And I know whether, whether it's arrogance or whether it's, um, uh, what's the other word? Not arrogant, but pride. Prideful person. Um, the third thing I found, the first one was wisdom, the second one was motivation for holiness and righteousness. The third one was prolonged life. Uh, you learn a lot about wisdom. The pastor talks about how life should be added to you. The Bible talks about in Proverbs 10, verse 27, the fear of the Lord prolongeth days. But the years of the wicked shall be shortened. And this was also a verse I learned uh, came in mind, my mind actually, when I was uh, reading the Bible. But I learned it Sunday on the bus. All the bus kids, after you have about 10 of them tell you, you tend to memorize it yourself. It's amazing. Um, but one of the things is prolonged life. You want a longer life, a life to do more with, more for God with? Start putting God first day in your life. Start making Him the number one thing you can, can do, is read His Word, have a devotion. Talk with him. Before problems come, say, God, I don't know if I'll have a problem today, but you see whether I will, will you help me with that? Uh, fourthly, it, it's confidence and safety. Proverbs 14, verse 27, or 26, I think. And the fear of the Lord, I think it was very wrong. Um, and the fear of the Lord is strong confidence, and his children shall have a place of refuge. Found in Proverbs and Solomon has a lot of instruction, a lot of wisdom, and um, read it once every three months. It'll help you with something. Yes. Um, but it says in the fear of the Lord is strong confidence, and his children shall have a place of refuge. Yes. There's a bit of confidence, well, boldness, 
when you're walking in the fear of the Lord, uh, when, when you're asking Him to help you through everything first, and you're putting Him completely first, and you're reading His Word and praying, it, it's you have a bit of boldness when you come to someone and hand them one of them five tracks. When you tell them about Christ. But it's more than that. More than just the confidence to go up and talk to someone. And he says his children have a place of re refuge. They have safety. They have a place they can go where when the problems are just many that they can go to and say, God, I need your help. But here, I was thinking, what about the person who's not really walking with the Lord, not being out there standing, not giving him the reverence he deserves? What about that person? And you're not going to have the confidence to come before the holy God and say, God, I have a problem. And be like, well, God,